that we were getting the heads disassembled and the rotating assembly assembled. Uh, those tasks are done and it's time to move on. I'm not going to show you the cleaning out of the heads because that was a very long, laborious process that I'd really, honestly, rather not relive. The, they were so nasty. It was just awful, uh, everything in there. Um, if you can put them in a hot tank and get them dipped, that's probably the best thing you can do to, to get those cleaned out. I chose instead to put them in my uh, utility tub here in the basement here at home and use Simple Green, a lot of scrub brushes, a lot of elbow grease, and a lot of hot water. And I got them cleaned up pretty well, and I'm happy with how they turned out, but it took a lot of time and a lot of effort. So, you know, it's up to you, right? You know, do you want to spend your time or spend your money? I spent my time. I don't know if that was a wise decision, but, you know, hey, if, it, if I was smart, we'd, we wouldn't be doing this. Anyway, moving on. So the rotating assembly's in. The heads are disassembled. This video, we're going to talk about getting the heads put together and getting them bolted on to the, uh, to the block. One important thing to notice, uh, I found that looking at the pistons on one side, the, uh, the right side of the engine, all of those pistons had little imprints of valves on them. And my concern was that we would find that the, 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 uh, the valves would be brittle and perhaps could shatter uh, down the road and, and obviously cause all sorts of foreign object damage inside the cylinders, which would completely thrash the block. I'm not sure how likely that was to happen, but I figured I might as well replace them just because I could tell that they had been impacting. The left side, I didn't see that. Um, it just didn't look like, like there were any marks on the pistons at all, so I left those valves as they were, but I still took everything apart to clean it out. There was a lot of carbon on those valves, probably keeping them from closing all the way. So not only did I uh, do that, um, through the valve lapping process for the brand new valves, but also went through that for the valves that we're reusing, again, just to make sure that everything is as uh, is cleaned up and as good as we can get it there. So that having been said, let's move on and uh, kind of walk through the process. The valve train components weren't really that bad. Um, there was a little bit of old oil on them, and that's really what I wanted to get off, just to just to kind of make sure I wasn't bringing anything into the new environment here. So just spray them down with a little simple green, hit them with a little scrub brush on the outside. I uh, found a you know, collection of little um, kind of barrel brushes for the inside, like that. Got them uh, uh, scrubbed out, rinsed off, no big deal. What I really wanted to focus on were the uh, valves themselves. So the valves had a lot of carbon and sludge kind of built up on them. So I get my favorite tool, the um, Formica chip, and just went ahead and scraped them down there with the, uh, uh, get the big components off. And then, uh, in order to really get it done quickly, I just take it and chuck it up in a drill and spin it around in there. So you just chuck them up, it doesn't have to be super tight, and you get a piece of steel wool, and you run it in the drill while you hit it with the steel wool. Now, I'm not really pressing hard against this or anything. It's just a light touch, just enough to kind of you know, get that carbon and stuff off and, and clean it up. And it'll come out looking pretty good. This is the right head, so cylinders one, two, and three. This is one, this is two, this is three. It's all cleaned up, all the carbon's out. It's ready to have its valves put back in. Here are all my new valves right here. I have my uh, intake valves and my exhaust valves and they're all lined up in this box. I've got them so I can keep them straight. One, two, and three, one, two, and three. I've got my new valve seals. These are ready right here to go on. And I have the old valves and hardware. I don't know how critical it is to keep springs and keepers and everything where they were if the valves are being replaced, um, but I'm keeping them that way anyway. There you go. Another thing I have is my lapping tool and my valve grinding compound. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to get these valves uh, lapped and ground in there. So basically, these valves are going to go in like that with the lapping compound. I'm going to use this little suction cup and I'm going to turn that thing around in there with that valve uh, lapping compound. And after I do one, I'm going to put it back up here so that it uh, is matched where it needs to be. Once they're all done, we're going to have to clean everything up, get all the valve lapping compound, valve grinding compound out of here. We'll get it all cleaned up 
and then the uh, valve seats will go in, or excuse me, the valve seals will go in, and then the valves and the springs and the keepers and all that other stuff will go in as well. And here we go. We'll go ahead and lap a valve, compound, put it in the head, use the uh, lapping tool, spin it around, spin it around, spin it around, keep spinning it around. Basically, you're just waiting for the sound and the feel to change to something a little smoother. Very tedious. Takes a while, but here you go. The valves are all lapped. You can see right here these seats have gone into a nice kind of uniform color where before they were a little mottled and whatnot from the uh, mostly the deposits that got in there. Those deposits on the old valves, and it's one reason you want to relap the valves uh, if you were using them like I did on the uh, on the other side. Um, well, those deposits will build up in here and uh, the valve will leak and you won't get good, uh, uh, good compression. So definitely want to do that. Take those valves out. Takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it, right? Just to, just to be sure everything's good. <clears throat> the head. So now we need to go ahead and install the valve seals. And these go in pretty easily. So I like to keep my fingers clean, so I'll use this. I'm gonna take the valve seal. <clears throat> I'm just gonna dunk it in the oil like so. And then set it in place. Once it's set in place, I've got a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. There we are. And just push it down. It does not take a lot of force to do that. It's a pretty, uh, pretty light operation. You're just going to kind of gently tap it in. And when you do, uh, when you do tap it in, the other thing that you're going to make sure uh, to remember is that there's a little shoulder on there that it's going to rest on. So let's get some light in here and we can see. But it's going to come down and it's not going to go all the way down to the bottom. It's just going to go down to this little shoulder right here and stop. Alright, seals are in. Now we can install valves. Exciting times. Alright, so... All right, I'm this valve right here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll drop this guy into place. Oh, but not like that. There we are. Okay, spring goes in. And that goes on. And give it a little bit of lubrication. So what I'm doing is I'm just making sure right there where those keepers go, those grooves, making sure that's good and lubricated. up slide that valve in right on up like that all right and one end of this goes on the valve I'm using the 25 millimeter for the valve and the 23 millimeter for the retainer all right and we just crank it down. Now, I also want to make sure that I'm holding this in a spot where it gives me a little bit of a window in there to see what uh, to see what I'm doing, so I can work and get the keepers in. So again, let's get some more light in there. So now I have my keepers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of grease, a little wooden stick here. This is a dowel rod. You could use a bamboo skewer. All right, so I'm just going to put a little grease in there, wipe off the rest in there. This little guy is magnetic, so I'm going to use him to hold the keeper and drop it in place. It tapers down like that. 
spray it in and drop it on right on top there. Bring this out of the way. And then I'm going to use my wood skewer here to rotate it around. There we are. So now it's on the bottom half and the next keeper can go right in the top half. So, alright, now once the keepers are on, we just take the pressure off. Now we watch the retainer as it comes up to make sure that it clears the initial taper and then it will catch like so. Alright, what I'm going to install now are the timing chain guides, so I've got new ones. Good shiny Phoebe model. Now, this pin goes right here, and it goes through this. So this is going to come up here, like so. And that pin goes in, like that. Alright, now, this right here is where the tensioner is going to hit right on that little knob right there and that's going to push that in to keep tension on the chain. Uh, Alright, now this is 12 Newton meters or, let me think about it for a second, 106 inch pounds. And it is a, let's see what size that is. What are we dealing with here? We're dealing with a T40. Okay, you've got several of these so be sure you've got the right one. So it's going to look like this and we've got a guide pin that's right up here like that. So we'll pull the guide pin out, and this goes in. Now, you got to think as you're doing this, right, where's that timing chain going to be going? And it's going to be coming up this way. So we're going to put this in in this direction. All right, there we go. All right, our next slide rail is the one that comes up here, and it's the one that looks like this. It's going to go in just like that, right through here. So again, first we take the pin out. This goes in. Cut. All right, the last one to put in is this guy down here. All right, whoops, excuse me, down here. So he's going to go in like this. Now, you have this little piece here, which is actually the tensioner for the oil uh, pump chain. Now, it is spring-loaded, but the new does not come with spring. You need the spring from the old. So first thing we have to do is remove this spring without losing it, without sending it flying. We are. Okay. Let me see how that's going to look. Just like that. Okay. So now that is on there with its spring. Looks like that. Like that. 
perfect. And it is going to go right where this pin is here. So this pin's got to come out, and then we bolt this back in. Ah, uh, that's going to wrap us up for part seven, I think. That's more than I think anyone really wants to watch. Anyway, so uh, next time, part eight, we're going to buy some new parts because I broke some things. We're going to get some heads attached. Uh, we're going to get uh, some diagrams figured out. We've got to put a new timing chain on because, spoiler alert, my old one was worn so much that I could not get the timing set. I won't show you that video. It's hours of frustrating frustration uh, but the timing set and we'll be able to watch that process with the right chain um, we'll be able to see what the engine's starting to look like as it comes together so uh, hopefully we have uh, that video out relatively soon look forward to seeing you next time